Hello, hello everyone and welcome to Divine Debut 11 and welcome to our love reading for Wednesday. Every Wednesday we do this. The day of Mercury, the messenger does bring you the messages relative to love we're using today. The Botticelli Tarot, I know that I've got a couple of big fans relative to the Botticelli Tarot which we haven't used for a while. We'll be taking a message from the Whispers of Love as well, Oracle, and we'll also be using the Black Moon Astrology deck, the Hal deck, which is a Greek deck. It's got sign symbols, it's got zodiac signs as well, so just looking to get a bit more information. And the, um, the L Gilded Reverie Lenormand, okay, we'll see, maybe take a couple of these cards as we always do the psychic uh, what am I saying the mystic moon oracles after all we are looking into twin flame connections sometimes they can be karmic it could be very confusing as to what role this particular person plays in my life today is the 31st of July 2024 Whenever you receive this message, it will be important for you. Thank you for your love, for connecting with us always. Today we will not be doing the yes please because I've got my love readings to do for patron, Patreon and, well, the elementals as well, which they're not doing that well. So sometimes I really feel as though, what's the point? Anyway, we'll see how we are time-wise. Um, patrons, of course, they're our first obligation as they're paying members, subscribers. So if you're interested in joining us today, I'll also be, after doing this reading, I will be looking into more analysis relative to the harsh uh, aspects and the synodic cycles um, of the planets. Um, and that will be an extra perk for Tier 3 members uh, through Patreon. If you're not a Patreon, do join us. You can get the link beneath um, in the more section beneath this video. All right, we've got a new moon. We've got a new moon coming up. We've got a new moon in Leo that's coming up and we've, we've done the uh, new moon analysis again through Patreon. Um, it is quite a significant uh, new moon as it's happening in the sign of the heart generosity leo so new moons remember are always always seeds that are planted this is happening on the 4th of august um 4th of august of 2024 is the new moon which is in it's a positive new moon but there can be some drama as uh, the sign opposite which is aquarius is where pluto is still there Let's see what the advice is. Let's begin with the advice. The whispers of love. Let's see where is love. Think of the person. Concentrate on the person you're watching this reading for. Looking for advice on. And let's see what the messages are. Wow. Okay, we've got two cards that have opened up. Thank you, Spirit. We've got have patience and look at your pattern in relationships interesting we've got a number 17 and the number 32 have patience love is patient and kind always have a look at the depiction maybe this is important for you it might tell you something the uh, image here i noticed the stars here and the 17 is also the star card i don't know if you're waiting on some uh, some communication through social media right because uranus rules aquarius aquarius is hope so have patience love is patient and kind patience speaks to earth for me earth signs we see this little uh, girl she's like birthed through this lotus flower which of course does speak to luck have patience i don't know if there's anything to do with uh, physical travel because she's like uh, she's like riding it's like a, she's on a boat physical travel have patience it could be physical distance between you and another person 
We do see a fair bit of water, so a lot of emotions. Have patience, water is water signs, of course. Now Aquarius is the water bearer, but it is an air sign. So we will be having um, some interesting aspects in the month of August where Venus, the goddess of love, um, justice, fairness and equilibrium in relationships is concerned. She will be having some interesting, um, and I'm going to say, uneasy aspects with some of the players within the stars that we do talk about in our analysis on Patreon. So we could have a lot of breakups. We could have lots of returns, uh, blasts from the past relative to Mercury retrograding. Remember, when we have a new moon, it's a new seed, and it lasts until the next new moon, which is will be the new moon in... in um, in September in Virgo so even though it's a positive new moon there still will be dramas as the rest of the collective well symphonic orchestra I would say as all the the planets do signify some sort of energy or I do see them as part of the orchestra the symphony they're, they're uh, beating their their sound very heavily and very loudly in the month of August. It's like screaming, it's like yelling, it's like hollering out that something needs to change. Something needs to change, yes. We've got tough aspects and tough aspects do speak to change because we get out of our comfort zone. We will be seeing things which could bring some drama, some shocking revelations. But this also speaks to patterns. Look at your pattern in relationships. Unhealthy patterns are logically the, the um, well, it's, it's Virgo Pisces, which would be the 6th and the 12th house. That's where we, you know, that axis speaks to what we do on a daily basis doesn't matter what rising you are and what you have in your 6th and 12th houses, they're still the uh, houses that do rule um, bad habits. It could be anything, actions we take, the way we think, anything like that. Look at your pattern in relationships. It requires inner strength to recognize that you need to change or modify your behavior. So it is talking about behavior so, you know, cycles and, and could also speak to uh, the Lord of Karma and Timing, Saturn, who obviously is in the story here. Number 32, 32 does equal a 5, um, 17, 1 and 7 equals an 8, where uh, today is the 31st of July, Lion's Gate, that big portal. On the 8th of the 8th is just ahead of us, just after this new moon in Leo. Um, obviously, this new moon in Leo will be very um, positive for the fire and air signs. Um, this new moon in Leo will challenge the fixed signs. So Leo, Aquarius, Taurus and Scorpio um, that are born around about that uh, around that 12th degree uh, well 12th degree would be 12 days into the sign let's say into the fixed signs roughly there that's the new moon so I would say because we've got some very positive aspects and lucky days around that new moon and until the 10th of the month we will have some shocking revelations first couple of days into August so just before that new moon and then something remember new a seed uh, a new moon is a dark moon I would say send your um, send your wishes out to spirit around the uh, 6th 7th 8th but I would say good good prospects after the 4th the most positive days would be the uh, roughly 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th. So don't hold back. If you're needing to communicate something uh, with Mercury retrograde, 
Past situations are returning. We've got the ability to look over and perfect. Mercury retrograding in Virgo and then in Leo in that second part of August. First part would be Mercury retrograde in Virgo, his home sign. So very important. Me, uh, Mercury and Venus, they're going to connect early degrees, first few degrees of Virgo. That could be a positive meeting, a meeting of the minds, a meeting of the hearts, a meeting with money, with finance, financial uh, situations and um, opportunities. Taking a trip, meeting with people that you love. Let's see what the astrology points out relative to your person. This relationship that you are focusing on as we are taking the cards. Thank you, Spirit, for your guidance. We've got North Node and Life's Purpose. That's a Jupiterian energy. The North Node, number 41, which equals a five. Another five. Five is also the Hierophant, Taurian energy. Uranus is going to be very active from Taurus with Algol. Remember Algol, Medusa, the poisonous head of snakes. Fives do speak to a sense of loss, uh, huge changes. It could speak to stress and anxiety. We'll be seeing a lot about the, a lot of that within the month of August, within that new moon, as the new moon is um, waxing and growing. But it's never easy to reach the North Node, is it? And this does not surprise me at all. A lot of provocation. We see a Grand Cross, number 11, 47. I don't know if these are ages, 41, 47, 32, 17. Important numbers maybe for you on a personal uh, level. But 47 equals a, it equals an 11. 11 is the card of justice. So I did speak of the Hierophant, Venus. We've got Venus again with Libra. A lot of things going on where love is concerned. We will be seeing lots of breakups because there will be a lot of provocation, a lot of stress, anxiety, and harsh energies. This is like, like a volcanic eruption, if I could use that term. And you know, Leo is fixed fire. Leo is confidence. Uh, Leo is Leo wants to take a gamble, uh, wants to play, needs that connection. Where there's been generosity and a lack of reciprocity, that could be provocation as well. Leo also rules um, our children, our creativity, inspiration. Uh, it does rule also uh, anything that we're bringing to the world. Remember, it rules the arts and um, celebrities and kingships and people that hold power. So there will be provocation. Um, as well, we'll be seeing in the world, we'll be seeing a lot going on in the world, my dear friends, surely. Let's see what else we've got. We've got Pisces and I believe, I do believe, <laughs> I do believe. Um, look, Pisces is the 12th natural house, which does speak to karma, does speak to endings, wrapping up, surrendering, seeing things from a different perspective not sacrificing where there hasn't been a return of your sacrifice, right? Um, maybe escaping also any, um, and I would say, uh, stay away from trouble if that is a possibility. That would be smart. That would be a very intelligent move. Take some time out to meditate. Take some time to sleep, to connect to spirit. Um, it's like, to me, these tough energies this month will be about purging, purging anything to do with bad habits, falling into the same cycles again and again. Look at your pattern in relationships, and if it's not you, then it's someone else playing this game, because Leo also speaks to games and play, and if someone is ghosting you, you come to the point of, provocation you come to the to a boiling point and faded events will play out so there will be endings there will be surrender there will be more clarity as those rose color glasses will come off no doubt because as i said venus is going to be doing some tough aspects with big players in the sky 
join us on Patreon so that you could understand who she's meeting and what she's up to. One thing I'm going to tell you that's very well known to all of you is that she will be squaring with Mars. Okay, that's all I'm going to tell you. They're the lovers of the Zodiac. Need I say more? There will be much more that she'll be up to. And we've got sixth house and routine. So you see, we were talking about the sixth house of Virgo and Pisces, the 12th house. Whether you've got Virgo on your sixth house cusp and Pisces on your 12th or not. If you do, that means you're an Aries rising. But nevertheless, sixth and 12th houses, they are about habits. Maybe you've been putting too much work and you need to sort of take a step back. Discern. Be uh, look closer at things. Remember Mercury retrograde, especially in Virgo in his home sign, right? He can really discern and really um, cut through the crap. Virgo uses logic, and Virgo, I do see Virgo very much many times as the Queen of Swords. Discern, cut through the chase, speak clearly, and get grounded, right? So a lot to do with routine, uh, healthy, um, healthy habits, healthy routines, putting in the work, servicing relationships when they return that and not only being the, um, the martyr and the victim, right, which could be Pisces. Interesting. So all these signs that have come up, so we've got, let's say North Node is in Aries, so Aries Libra come through, surely, with the North and the South Nodes, Pisces a Virgo also come through. Let's take, let's put these cards up here somewhere, I don't know where to put them. Yes, you can see them and okay, let's focus on our person, on this relationship. What does the Botticelli want to advise? Oh, and that's a number 30. Number three, three is the Empress as well. Hmm. calling on our spirit guides to guide us here. What are the messages we are reading for the general public? Remember, if you're interested in a personal reading, do reach out. Take the messages that resonate for you and leave the rest. Let's, we're going to take a Celtic cross straight off the bat. Thank you, spirit. Thank you for your guidance. Let's see what's going on. Okay, let's see generally. So we've got a Knight of Cups here, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. We've got a Seven of Cups, which is a lot of confusion, illusion, not being totally um, clear on what's going on. Pisces comes through strongly, Scorpio, Pisces. And we've got the Ace of Cups here with the Ace of Cups, of course, is a new opportunity, right? It's a brand new start. Um, this is, we know aces are self-love as well. Ace of Cups is your cupping, your cup running over. A very emotional month indeed. If we add up the cups, we've got the Nine of Cups here, which is a wish fulfillment. Or someone's trying to escape through drinking, binging, falling back into old, unhealthy habits which is not a good thing. Now, I'm going to say, your, through the tough energies of August, of maybe also this week, I, I would say not so much this week. I would say for you personally, timing, because timing is we're not all on the same timeline. When you receive this message, that's when it should be more, more applied to your own personal situation. And my little candle is is turning off and that's because of the the fan that I've got running in here we need more light thank you spirit let's go let's lay down all the cards we've got the four of cups more water in the now position 
King of Pentacles is in the challenge position. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Minor Arcana of the Emperor. You're coming from the Hanging Man. Pisces. Sacrifice. Recent past. King of Cups. We could be talking about a Taurus or a Scorpio if this is the same person. We could be talking about an Earth sign or a Water sign. Both very yin energy. Yin from a divine masculine would be that they're not very active, right? They're more nurturing and loving and waiting on maybe you to take action. What's crowning? We've got the Five of Swords. There are third parties or there's, there's anxiety, stress and uh, possibly also legalities. Third parties, interference. Internal conflict, external conflict, legal conflicts, possible separation, divorce. Someone emotionally is unhappy within their home. They haven't been able to accept an offer, an emotional offer, because why? Because King of Pentacles could be someone that is a father, a husband, or this is someone that holds finances very strongly within their life they need their security and of course king of pentacles is someone that's very slow to move usually taurus but with uranus transiting through taurus if that is the case they're going through lots of ups and downs financially as well as their personal life on all levels so maybe missed opportunities four of cups would be someone emotionally that's not happy if they're they've got a commitment they're they're emotionally committed to either a family that they've built or the family uh, their family of origin someone who holds great responsibility but there's been um a stagnancy stagnancy and karma this this relationship or at this time let's say What's going on is that there's great release. There's a huge cycle that's needing to be released. Remember, Pisces is emotional, unhealthy habits, possibly of escapism and ghosting. If you have not been, if you have been dealing with someone that hasn't been very verbal, uh, Pisces is I hide, I hide, right? I hide in my own little emotional safety safe world or i'm someone that sacrificed a lot for the money for uh be, because i'm a father because i don't know we'll see but recently in the past the king of cups very strong scorpio energy doesn't have to be could be any any water sign maybe there has been uh, an indication of a possible offer coming from someone who's gone through a maturing process because kings are about maturity within love. So we've seen um, we've seen a couple of fives that we've mentioned. Fives, fives do speak to change. Let's look at the near future. We've got four of pentacles. Someone that's holding back. A couple of fours. Uh, a couple of fives. Four would be the Emperor. Five is Hierophant. Responsibilities, whether it's business, whether it's commitments, whether it's contracts, whether it's someone who owns their own business. Look, this is someone who's hoarding the money, someone that's trying to, uh, because this is the miser. When someone is a miser where, with their money, they're a miser with their heart and the other way around. Four of Pentacles can also mean that I'm holding back to a relay. I'm holding back on what my heart holds. I'm not sharing that because usually in the Four of Pentacles, we've got someone that's protecting their heart. But also, I'm holding back on information, not giving you the information that I'm going through financial distress or instability where my home is concerned because four of pentacles four of cups this does speak to someone's personal life and around their home around their security whether it's extended family or a family that this king of pentacles which is like the emperor is concerned now four of pentacles also means i've always 
loved you unconditionally, but the problems in my life did not allow me to open my heart. I'm conflicted because I'm dependent on others, possibly. I've sacrificed my emotional happiness for the money, for fatherhood, for a business. And the pattern could be this, this, this uh, divine masculine, which I feel most of you out there that are watching this reading are more uh, women. You're, there, we've got more women here than men. Um, whether, you know, because, of course, a woman can have very strong masculine um, energies in, in their chart, so they come through as more masculine. Now, logically... In general readings, we could be talking about someone that just needs stability. And, of course, kings do speak to the experience. So take the messages as they resonate for you. We've got two kings here, and kings are all about maturity and experience, which could be, if you're a woman, you are going through this, possibly. Um, we'd, as we do have cross watchers here as well. Let's continue in the position of you. We've got the Nine of Pentacles. If it's not you, it could be also the relationship, okay? Uh, so we've got very, very strong water and earth. Water and earth. Nine of Pentacles. It's like a minor arcana of the Empress. Some of you have been very, very patient. Some of you are mothers. Some of you are quite powerful. Uh, you attract at this point, you could be very attractive to the opposite sex, to the other person. Some of you are also very strong spirited and a very strong individual or you're building on that. The Nine of Pentacles is also speaks to financial independence or singlehood or being alone within the Garden of Eden. Obviously, what's missing from the Nine of Pentacles, because she's got everything that she needs, what's missing is that Tenth Pentacle, which speaks to the security and the grounded, um, you know, certainty of, of relationship, of marriage, of a long-term commitment. So this is a Virgo card. Virgo, uh, we're coming into the Virgo season soon, and... We are still in the Leo season. Happy birthday, my beautiful Leos that are celebrating your birthday at around about this time. You're coming into your solar return. Hopefully for the uh, early more first and second de deacon Leos, um, it, it'll be better for you. Those that are born in the last, you know, the last 10 days of Leo, unfortunately, it's not going to be an easy year moving forward since the challenging aspects are at the later degrees of uh, the Leo season and into, unfortunately, into also the early part of the uh, Virgo season. Um, unfortunately, my beautiful first deacon Virgos. Anyway, let's see in your environment which connects to your person more than likely. We've got the Knight of Wands, the Traveller, Knight of Wands is a player, is someone who is fired up and ready to take action, is someone that loves to travel, someone that um, is going to take action because the Knight of Wands carries that Ace of Wands, which is, this is what I desire to do. So it could speak to travel, movement. I don't know if you're dealing with a foreigner as well because... This would be Sagittarian energy, and Sagittarius is foreigners, long distance travel, unless, you know, horses don't travel over water, so it could be traveling interstate, possibly. Knight of Wands, someone that's always on the road. It could be relative to what they do, where their vocation is concerned, but where your person is concerned, it feels as though they're ready to take the action, they're driven. What's on their mind and you know, what's crowning your person 
and also what what is going on in your hopes and fears. So we've got a page of cups, Pisces, the knave of chalices. So on their mind could be an apology, could be a return because the knave is looking towards the past. Something because of Mercury retrograde and the retrogrades generally, um, there could be something that's going on retro, um, relative and connected to the past, to the Mercury retrograde cycle through the whole of August, which will sort of catapult and energize this night to move towards the future. Because here, remember we're talking about masculine energy. Um, Sagittarius is a mutable fire. Now Leo is fixed fire and we're in the Leo season. So there could be a, a little bit of a challenge where change is concerned because fixed signs don't like change. Um, we're, we're still in that, that fixed energy of Leo and a fair bit uh, has been mentioned relative to Aquarius Taurus which is more fixed. Now the fixed signs obviously are being squared to make the changes. The advice is to be flexible here. That's what I get. That is what I get because when there's a lot of fixation this sort of builds up the energy of you know powerful energized stress and anxiety and obviously fixed signs don't uh, take change easily uh, because they need to be certain before they move forward so as i was saying pisces is a mutable sign so and we need to make the changes we need to release remember pisces is also bad habits and cycles and remember through pisces is where saturn is right now so it also pisces speaks to i believe and that is a very um spiritual a very spiritual sign uh so through any hardships and we know that uh, awakenings happen through tough energies such as these so, uh, through uh, provocation and hardship and force okay sometimes force is necessary for change to happen and sometimes uh, change i'm going to say is healthy even though it could um, emotionally bring us to a, a boiling point or to the brink of I can't do this but Pisces says I believe and I surrender and I leave it up to spirit and the divine sometimes it does remind me of you know the mountain goat getting up those last few steps where we don't have the stamina the strength but it's the belief that will take us to that um, to that peak right which is the peak of success let's see what the outcome is Oh my God, oh my God, that is beautiful. We've got the wheel of fate, the wheel turns, Jupiter. The planet of luck, expansion, growth, abundance. Now, Jupiter is all about the wisdom as well. Now, tens do speak to aces because they're like a cycle. This is the hand of spirit and the divine. This is divine timing where fated changes need to happen. Remember I said the North Node is a Jupiterian energy. It's a blessing even though it's, it's, you know, it's hard to reach that peak, um, that zenith, you know, which, you know, a mountain is like the Saturnian, Cronian, I can't get there. And then Kronos is still punishing you. You feel as though it's a punishment but it's you out, out, um, not out, but more so outdoing your abilities. So going above and beyond your capabilities, that is what Saturn asks of us. And then his gifts are huge. Um, but also the help of Jupiter, which speaks to um, foreign travel, um, justice, breaking free, 
this is also a freedom card because nothing will hold this knight back. He's driven, his life force is fire and fire does create. It's about action, okay? And we also see the wheel where obviously there are people falling off the wheel here. The wheel turns up and then it turns down. If you've been in a really tough cycle, maybe this is the change here because it does turn into an ace. And as I said, we've got the Knight of Cups at the foundation. What's beneath the Knight of Cups? There's the Ten of Pentacles, which I said, what is missing? The Ace of Pentacles for this Nine. We've got the Ten of Pentacles here and the house for me, which I've mentioned in um, yesterday's messenger is here. The house is actually the goal. So the marriage, the commitment, the let's move in together, right? Ten Ten of Pentacles also speaks to a challenge because it's an ending of a cycle. This could be someone coming out of a family unit. If this is the ending, it's fate, which brings a brand new cycle, a brand new beginning. And it involves matters of heart, a possible offer. We've got the Knight of Cups and we've got the, we've got the, uh, sorry, Page of Cups, Knight of Cups, King of Cups interesting that we're sort of going backwards and I feel that that is like going back to the past to pick up on what we missed right what we missed now because pages could be also be children children could be important if this is relative to a family situation because the ten of pentacles is family it's extended family it's financial situations, as I was saying before. This could also be, I mean, the house could also be someone's business, which is connected to family. And we've got the Knight of Pentacles. Knight of Pentacles, King of Pentacles. What's missing is the in-between, which is the Queen of Pentacles here, to have the family. Right? Knight and King. Interesting because the Queen of Pentacles would be the mother, the nurturing. We see the King of Pentacles in the, the challenge position, which would take him back a notch to the Queen of Pentacles, I would say, which is all about knowledge. So maybe this person is keeping the knowledge away uh, from you, not sharing what's going on for them personally relative to maybe maybe a partner a past partner something to do with motherhood fatherhood comes through again we've got a ten of swords another ten here ten of swords ten of pentacles another ten here with a wheel let's see what's going on we'll take more cards i want more clarity please spirit let's look at the lenormand Knight of Pentacles is also Virgo, very slow, very much about planning, strategizing for the future, looking at, you know, uh, things from a grounded perspective and not, you know, from a practical perspective and not so much from a, an emotional because this is the general energy, but the, the movement is very slow. Finances could be playing a major role here. Now with the knave, the page of cups here, this is someone hoping to make this offer, someone hoping to receive this offer, or someone even fearing returning and apologizing relative to maybe a bit of play from the past, a little bit of hmm, possibly trickery, a lack of being able to give security to the other person, stability, because the King of Pentacles, who does provide security, is in the challenge position. Let's take the Lenormand. What's going on? We've got the whip, number 11. So there's conflict, possible legalities, uh, verbal, verbal challenges. Be careful, there could be a lot of that. Someone uh, stressed and then feeling having a sense of anxiety relative to 
what they're going to speak about or going into separation mode or possibly risking also conflict because maybe 11 11 is a portal just like the uh, Lionsgate portal which is the 8th of the 8th uh, around that portal will be a very important time we do have luck, luck on our side but if you pass that uh, that um, window of opportunity around the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th up until the 10th I'm going to say then after that maybe um, close your mouth zip it up because any risk verbal risk uh, relative to um, a lack of injustice or possibly also uh, threatening someone relative to conflict taking a, a, a gamble a bet on making threats i'm going to do this i'm going to do that be careful because this is also provocation this could be coming from the uh, from another person a lot of uh, adjustments and dilemmas we've got two 11s oh my god and a 12. We've got the um, the bridges, burning your bridges. Be careful. Uh, adjustments, dilemmas, choices. Uh, hedging one's bets. The bridge also to me is like a like a blockage, like a limitation needing to cross over a bridge. But we've got an ending here, and it's going to happen very suddenly with a scythe. 11 and then 10 we sort of go backwards here all uh, so be careful i'm going to say the 10th 11th 12th of the month is going to be very challenging but whatever is birthed because three is the empress whatever is birthed this provocation will bring at some point will bring transition and serenity and change because we've got a very positive card the uh, ship is like the jupiterian energy and there won't be any more confusion i would say it's like we're finding our way finding our way out of the the maze let's take a couple more because we can We've got the mountain, which is karma, uh, limitations and restrictions. And we've got the book. Some Something is being um, known, cleared, I would say here, because the book is like knowledge. It's on the Jupiterian card, so I get that it's wisdom here about how to close a difficult uh possibly also cycle remember the bad habit cycle these are all cycles as well this could be the ending of a chapter i would say and especially with uh, the will of fate being there which is also jupiter also rules pisces where there was a lack of knowledge there will be knowledge because the wisdom comes through from jupiter jupiter that is with mars transiting through gemini and gemini is information there will be a lot of verbal a lot of information back and forth the thing is to be smart there will be trickery there will also be uh, deception will be seeing the deception as well uh, hello hello also someone trying to hide their deep emotions their fears their fears that are coming up emotional fears relative to the psyche and their past because of deception because of others that are distrustful it's like the uh the loyalty is like blocked because of emotional psychological fears whether it's linked to their childhood or linked to their life now because look there it is there's the snake the third party the um 
the forbidden knowledge. This is also the other woman. There's competition. There's deep desires. Moon in Cancer. Interesting because the moon in Cancer was the moon before this new moon in Leo. So right now, because the dog is also play, right? I want to play. I'm... Um, I'm trusting, but can I trust? It's like a back and forth. It's like a back and forth. Also, the poison. The poison here could be distrust because someone was open to trust. Maybe there was deception. Maybe there was dishonesty. Hmm. Infidelity. Possibly. Now that moon in Cancer and then the two new two full moons in Capricorn, it's been tough. It's been really, really tough. Let's see emotionally with the uh, Mystic Moon Oracles. Let's see emotionally. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, my dear friends. We are not doing the yes please as I am busy preparing um, the love readings guidance it's halfway so we're on the way to guidance the guidance could be from within or from without from a teacher from a guru from a i don't know it could be a solicitor someone who holds the wisdom could be a, an astrologer tarot reader let's see the wisdom could also come in during or maybe even with the planets that have that are entering Virgo, as we're still in the Leo season, we we will have Venus in, in uh, Virgo, right? And that's very important. So it gives us a bit of a tone of the Virgo uh, season that's coming up. But Venus in Virgo is very stingy. She can be very discerning. She's all about the little details. So don't try to pull the wool over the eyes of a Virgo, someone who's very good with their details. Um, it's not the Piscean energy. Pisces is I trust, I believe, I surrender. Virgo is I discern, I check, I look through that magnifying glass. That's the difference. Destruction. Big change, tower moment. Big shift as Uranus is activated. Uranus and Venus are in a square early August and then late August they're in a good aspect so hello hello any changes could possibly bring this big dream ground this big dream take off those rose colored glasses we're needing to make the changes we've got Uranus and Neptune here and we've also got Mercury so a lot of information that will clear that was unclear I would say here Big shifts that you feel maybe uh, you've been, um, hold on, you've been deceived. Maybe that's not the true story. Maybe you felt as though you've been deceived, that you had the right information, but then all of a sudden it's like a twist of the story, a twist of fate. Let's see, because the big dreams again, we see a lot of water, a lot of emotion. Solitude. And also, I wanted to say that the new moon Sabian symbol does speak to taking some time out in meditation. Even though Leo is about being out there, it's a different Leo. It's a different Leo season this year, my dear friends. So maybe the light comes from within. Maybe someone's coming out of there out of the shadows they've gone through an awakening they've gone through a winter phase now winter could be a yes a season but it could also be a psychological state and we've got the mask very strong uh, Pisces Virgo energies here the solitude and the guide is very much the hermit energy for me um, but solitude is also Pisces we could say in the mask is Pisces so what's going on because this uh, the mask is Neptune remember but Uranus brings sudden changes and awareness 
that may not be easy let's see as the masks come off the victimhood more piscean energy it's like a release or needing to believe we've got the fear and at the bottom we've got stuck energies we've got uranus and saturn here remember also that because we've got mutable energies here mutable means flexibility remember where someone is not able to be flexible and they're stuck they're going to have a really tough time of it in making the you know making their changes now we see a divine we see the feminine and the masculine what's sitting between them is the mask it's like they're not showing their true emotions they're not being totally totally truthful there's fear of emotional intimacy it could be physical for some but i would say it's more emotional um because we've got virgo here the cycles i would say are more about emotional fear uh, that sort of blocks the practical side of the relationship which is the practical means the crystallization the reality maybe this is what needs to be wow needs to be released fifth dimension and see the scythe and someone's ready to take someone's provoked into following their north node and releasing the emotional fear and the cycles the unhealthy cycles they're taking a risk in the time of leo to break the cycle could be because possibly in divine timing there's a purging of someone's old self of the fear of poison and distrust because someone maybe has gone through their awakening they've had the wisdom that they may be connecting to a fifth dimensional twin flame but what's blocked is timing wow good old uncle saturn is here let's take the how for a moment just a little bit more information thank you spirit until i take another layer here and we're going to try and make this reading not as long as the other uh weeks it is a very hot summer in greece i know that there are fires burning in other places let's just pray that fires burning and fires could be literal they could be metaphorical wherever fires are happening in our personal lives in the collective that they are put out quickly let's see what's going on good old saturn good old uncle saturn capricorn and aquarius come through blockages limitations restrictions and hard work but also being grounded being patient we've got some tough news here someone's being uh, maybe i don't want to use the word punished but going through some karma and you may be hearing this someone sort of i would say like a a karmic a tough lesson i don't know if this is you that's feeling you're um, going through this but i feel that you're hearing this mainly from the other person this could be someone that's got holds responsibility saturn saturn remember rules capricorn and aquarius but it could also be someone that holds a position of power responsibility this is someone that's going through a maturing process it could be the relationship and at this time the news is not good actually but then it's like i get like a like the feminine energy something to do with the feminine energy here and i get like an, an alignment of the stars and it is a number 44 34 39 44 pay attention to the numbers there's like an alignment of the stars like that um that yin loving nurturing energy which also speaks to venus because venus mm, venus says she's going to enter virgo virgo is a 
the uh, Virgo is the the sign of service, motherly help, and um, a sense of sacrifice as well. So it's like a, an alignment of the stars, which could bring some changes. Let's see. Wow, it's like the Ace of Wands, the fire is put out because it's in the reverse, or the Ace of Wands that this Knight of Wands, your person is holding, is in the reverse right now. It's like their fire is put out or blocked because of responsibility, because of some bad news. I don't know if this is someone that has a daughter as well. Could be a daughter, could be a son. We've got the bed, and the bed speaks to someone's personal, physical, sexual life. Um, this could be promising a relative to when the stars align for this desire of physical connection. But there's been a little bit of tough, tough, uh, bad luck, let's say. We do have the wheel here. Now, you know I'm not reading reversals, so I don't know when um jupiter will be is going to be active um and connecting to tough cycles so i believe august is not the month for for um for most for positive opportunities because things need to change things are not easy the bed could also speak to someone not feeling well going through some illness Someone also emotionally getting grounded because we're talking about earth here. Earth, earth signs, Scorpio comes through as well. Now there can be a little bit of ego as well here. What is this grounding energy of the earth? Which can speak to money, finances. We've got the, the, uh, the island, the paradise here. To get to this paradise... Someone needs to be patient. Someone needs to be grounded. The physical aspects of a relationship also or getting intimate will be a little bit late. This like, um, it's like a dream. It's like the big dreams here. The news is not coming in yet, my dear friends, because the messenger, the bird, the news is in the reverse. So there's something not happening when you want it to happen i feel here there are blockages and limitations we see a divine masculine more on the more younger side if not it could be someone that's older but someone that's on the lighter side someone with more fair hair i would say we've got a younger masculine and a more mature feminine both are pointing towards the more fair blonde red hair ashy hair um, connection. So yes, I suppose usually the lighter colored uh, signs would be more air and water. So this could be that you've got a lot of air and water in your chart or they have your person. Let's see what's going on. Why do we have the four of cups here? And uh, Gaia is next to me and she's, um, she's dreaming. She's talking in her sleep. We've got the hermit here and someone falls down on their knees. This is, this is someone being humbled greatly. Someone looking for, the, uh, for advice. Someone, uh, someone being, I don't know, at the mercy of fate just jotting down the title because I never remember so we've got the hermit here the Virgo season why do we have the hermit here remember the hermit could be a doctor could be an advisor could also be a, someone that's in the legal field and the challenge is the Page of Swords, which is communicating clearly. Why do we have the Hanging Man as the foundation? Why, 
What's this sacrifice and this surrender about? We've got the Six of Wands. Someone that was riding high on their horse, possibly uh, with strong Leo in their charts, maybe needed to surrender and see things from a different perspective. If this is someone that's been, that's well known in their community, um, they've been successful in career. Six of Wands is a little bit of ego and vanity. It is the Leo card. Someone realizing that success is not only being recognized by everyone and what I've got in the bank, but the success is seeing the, um, the truth of who we truly are and what we're here to do. Let's look at the King of Cups. We've got Aquarius and the star. This could be the star does speak to hope and possibly also a, a wish fulfillment at a possible timely or physical distance. We do see the um, three, three deities here. So I don't know if this speaks to third party situations, but this could also speak to collaboration, possibly emotional collaboration, but also third parties affecting the outcome of this connection. The stars do speak to uh, healing and hope and truth, but also freedom and detaching, seeing things more clearly. Let's take one more on the star, which is like a wish fulfillment. We've got the Six of Cups, a soulmate connection. Something to do with nostalgia, the past, and possibly someone's wish fulfillment, which could have been a child. King of Cups has given their, their cup to this little baby. It could be. Or given their cup to this soulmate connection. And there's nostalgia about a maybe internet-based, because of physical distance, relationship as Mercury goes back to the past retrogrades what is this five of swords that is crowning we've got the ace of pentacles my friends which i said is what's missing from you and the position of this relationship the, here is the opportunity here is possibly the offer here is the offer where do i put the cards Let's take one more, because this is a gift from spirit, a gift from the heavens. We see the angels. This is an opportune moment. We need to overcome the fear, the stress, the conflict, the internal um, perceptive battle that someone's going to lose their head. Interesting that, you know, Algol Medusa is with Uranus and Uranus will be squaring over to Venus. Uh, someone's going to lose their head, they're going to lose their uh, reputation, they're going to lose their home, their money, their money in the bank, whatever this is. That's the dilemma here. And we've got Two of Cups. We've got the Two of Cups, my dear friends. This is what's on your person's mind, on your mind. This is what's crowning the reading. This is what's trumping the reading. This is what we're reaching for. Something stable long-term relative to a soulmate connection, a twin flame connection for others. Even though there's conflict, there will be a meeting of the minds. Even if heads are going to roll, which means there will be some loss and some drama. Let's see what the near future holds. We've got the moon. And the moon does speak to secrets use your intuition the full moon in aquarius at that second part of the month full moon in aquarius is going to be a very very tough 19th of august and coming up to it and around it there's going to be like a pullback if there's a promise here someone's going to pull back there's going to be um fears second thoughts there's the Ten of Wands. It's too heavy. I don't know if I can do this. The promise. A promise taken back. This could be quite um, quite tough. Which is going to bring a lot of conflict. Two of Swords. Even a 
look at this, a punch up. They're in a fight, not only verbally, physically. I don't know who you're fighting with. I don't know if these are two people that are competing for the heart of, because we've got a King of Cups and a King of Pentacles. Could be two different people. Because there's a huge dilemma here. The Two of Swords is, oh my God, I, I don't know. Choices. To get into a fight or to be alone and stay and let the uh, tough energies, the tough tidal wave um, play out. Take a step back. Take some quiet time, I would say. That is what we need to do. And the Eight of Wands says that things will shift from the dilemma. There will be also messages, quick messages, love messages, possible travel or a dilemma around travel, physical travel relative to love because Eros is here, the love child. Remember, the lovers are going to be Venus and Mars. They're going to be, yes, in a square. So decisions will not be easy. Let's look at your person. We've got the two of pentacles, things being up in the air. Little devils here. This is very, very uh, Saturnian for me. Responsibilities, heaviness, difficult, challenging situations. Um, and then we've got number 11, which is justice. Well, it's not justice because in the um, Botticelli, we've got the strength card here. So Leo comes through. This is someone needing to overcome and, how can I say, be stronger than what they normally are, like the roar of the lion, you know. And they need to believe in themselves or they need to sort of hold back on their desires because there are things it's like things are up in the air or they need to overcome and trust and have the faith that there will be trust between the action that they take uh, between you know the decisions they make the action they take and relative to this relationship and we've got the ten of pentacles here so if if th this could be that you're connecting with someone that's still got obligations from a past relationship Unless that's you. Unless that's both of you. Ten of Pentacles. We've got the nine in the position of you and the ten, which is turns into the ace on the side of the person. So what they can offer you can be something long-term. But if they're in another connection, this is what they're needing to work on. This is like the Ace of Pentacles. They need to work hard. So they will hold back on their desires. They will hold back on this paradise, this moment of paradise. You could be dealing with someone that lives in a very dry um, place. Uh, well, of course, Egypt comes up a lot, but this could be an island. This could be a dry place, a very hot, tropical place as well that they they reside in or they live in um let's take one more on that ten of pentacles because to me the ten of pentacles here with the pentacles heading on to this door this is like a, a the, the portal to success relative to this connection um but there are also dilemmas because we've got stairs stairs on the left side and on the right side we could possibly see the thing is to follow to be grounded, follow the money, follow the money. The money logically is the heart. The heart, if you follow your heart, that's where the money is. That's where the abundance is. And we've got the three of cups, which could be a reconciliation, a celebration, or anything involving third parties. And I'm going to say, because they're two angels, we could see Venus in her birthing suit here. This could be someone being vulnerable with their heart, your person, unless they're fearing being vulnerable with their heart 
relative to their reputation or to their society, I'm going to say, possibly as well. But remember that Venus was birthed through the foam after a... Uh, after the battle of, of course, Uranus and Saturn, right? And the disempowerment of Uranus, he lost his power. He lost the ability to hold the throne because Saturn took over. So this is like a changing of the guard, I'm going to say. And through this changing of the guard, which would be like the Wheel of Fortune, this is like leaving a past story, uh, a huge cycle, and entering a new one because Venus is being birthed. Now, interestingly enough, is that this new moon Leo um, is tied in with last year's uh, Venus-Sun uh, conjunction, last year's Venus retrograde cycle. So look back to October of last year, see what was going on then, okay? Let's see, we've got the Nine of Cups, and sorry, this is the Eight of Cups, but it's the Ninth Cup that the page holds. So Eight of Cups says, I fear leaving where I did not find my happiness. But after this, there is the confidence and the gamble and the risk taken to return back to this situation to either ask someone out to return and apologize or even anything that's connected to play, because remember, children, pages of play, they're risk factors, they, they, they bring a little bit of play. This is page, page of cups, which is very much like Pisces. It's like the fish. It's, it happens so quickly and unexpectedly that an offer does come in. So this may uh, trigger this offer may trigger an emotional change. Nine of Cups, we're hoping for a wish fulfillment. What does Jupiter bring us here? We've got the Ten of Cups, my dear friends, which does turn into the Ace. It does turn into the Ace, unbelievable. And we've got the Nine of Swords, not without much worry. The Ten of Cups, again, is the ending of a family unit. An emotional chapter, unhealthy possibly chapter, or it's all about timing. This chapter has ended within your life. This is like a restart. Two aces here and a nine, which is also an ending. And we've got the king of wands. Remember the king, the knight of wands has turned into the king of wands. Interesting, we've got three kings, so there is some protection from possibly a divine masculine figure, someone who wears a crown, someone who holds a position of power, someone who could be a little bit egotistical. And we've got the Three of Pentacles. I do get, like the title, the stepping stones to this house, to the success. We even see the angel, Mark Angel Michael, walking on those stepping stones to the to the success and I love absolutely love these cards how can you not love the Botticelli my dear friends and I know Kelly hello my beautiful Kelly I know how much you love this deck it's your favorite let's see what's beneath and we've got the Queen of Pentacles oh my god we've got the family here here is the minor arcana of the Empress everyone Queen of Pentacles King of Pentacles Knight of Pentacles. Earth, being grounded, being stable. This is what I really want. Um, it's not about, it's about emotional change that will bring physical change. That's what I see in today's reading, my dear friends. Seven of Swords, there have been lies, deception. Four of Wands, within a home. And a judgment, a moment of judgment relative to a portal opening, but also to a marriage. Because there's been deception, lies, trickery, third parties. The trickery could have been also from a mother figure. Someone that was not, because here it's like we've got 
Mother Mary and Jesus, someone who did not provide the feminine, let's say, that did not provide the stability to the father, the mother that did not provide the stability to the father. Anyway, I'm going to say possibly, possibly because we see a divine feminine with fire here, so a past fire, fire sign, fire or air, um, making way or being decept deceptive and in reality being totally different to what this queen, queen of pentacles provides, which is what you see is what you get. There's truth. There's not just desire. There's truth. There's uh, actuality. There is stability. There is patience. Remember what, remember what this card says, have patience. Love is patient and kind always. Okay, my dear friends, one last card on the Knight of Cups. Of course, what's missing, we, we had the Knight of Cups, the King of Cups. We didn't have the Queen of Cups, which would also be the High Priestess, but nevertheless. And we've got the Three of Swords. Wow. Three of Swords, uh, this offer hasn't been able to come in. Remember, the Knight of Cups has uh, cold feet because of third parties, because of heartbreak or disappointment. But we've also got the two of wands here. Yes, choices, choices and dilemmas and judgment, another two. So uh, through a moment of crisis, um, a, a critical moment, there will be a decision that will be made relative to moving forward, even if there's been disappointment and heartbreak. Remember what I said about uh, trusting. Remember what I said about um, dilemmas, possible also deception, hmm. but also things that need to, because this is like going through an emotional death, a crisis because of a heartbreak, because of third parties, because of someone hedging their bets possibly. This is judgment. It's number 20. 20 is also a two. Remember, twos speak to separation, but also coming together. This is a resurrection, second chances at love. This is spirit saying that there's divine source help, even though through crisis, birthing happens through crisis. Birthings are never easy. So, of course, King of Wands fire sign or someone that is embodying the the, the um, confidence and the know-how on how to move forward leave worries behind and is inspired to create and take action all right we've got chiron here seven of wands someone's been pushing back because of psychological uh wounding connected to past lifetimes or their childhood, some sort of emotional, physical wounding. That's why there's been pushback. There have been pushbacks here, but the possibility for healing um, can come through. And remember, this Chiron, there's an affiliation with Chiron and the um, and Sagittarius, the uh, Knight of Wands. This is the wounded healer. And remember, um, this is someone that's very different. We're talking about a centaur. Chiron is also going to be in good aspect to Venus. So whatever you're going through right now, it says to me that love is going through healing, but the healing asks us to look at the open wound. That open wound needs to be taken care of, not just putting a Band-Aid on it. That's not going to cure it, okay? And sometimes learning to live with this wound and through our own experiences and, um, and life's um, journey, our soul's journey, we, we also become healers towards others. 
but there's an animalistic um, desire in at this time, right? An animalistic desire because we've got Chiron in the Seven of Wands. Wands speak to fire, sexuality, desire. And that's what Leo is all about. Leaving self-worth behind because Leo may be, or the Leo season, may be dimming our self-confidence because of the hard aspects. Keep that in mind, my friends. And with that, I will leave you. What a wonderful, what a wonderful reading this was. Ah, my goodness, my goodness. I hope that it resonates for you. Let's take some, let's take some handwritten love messages and close up this reading. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing and commenting. It always helps the channel. You can always order a personal reading. You can join us on Patreon. You can like, share, subscribe and comment. It helps the channel. Thank you so much in advance. A special, special thank you to our patrons. We have taken the uh, July winners. We had a bit of a twist in the uh, July winnings. And thank you once more to our beautiful Empress of the Universe 13, who wanted to gift her her win of a 40 minute tarot reading to another lucky um, patron. We do have beautiful souls within our community here. That's what it's all about. Let's see. Remember, we may be connecting to your energies as well. If not with you, then no one. Four of Pentacles in the near future. This is insisting on a particular person. This is my truth. Take another card. Ace of Swords. I want you in my life for today, tomorrow and forever. Nine of Cups. That's their truth. I have loved you from the moment I met you, but the problems in my life don't allow me to follow my heart right now. It won't be fair on you either. It won't be fair on you either. Your eyes are familiar to me. I know that we've shared lives before. You must feel it too. I am. My heart bleeds for you. I'm not living, just breathing. Nine of Swords. There will be breakups, my dear friends, unfortunately, but everything is going to happen like clockwork as, it meant, as it's meant to happen. I do believe in fate. Whatever's written in the stars and in your personal birth chart, I believe, in the, even though, you know, the astrologers say you can um, change your destiny. For me, destiny does not change. You can tweak, and when there's something difficult that you're facing, um, get through it in, in not such a hard way. But, you know, it's not about the journey, it's the destiny. It's written when we take our first breath, for me. The physical distance between us is so great, I need to decide if I can do this. Time will tell. You mean the world to me. I want this journey towards you or I will take this journey towards you. A couple of twos here. So we've got dilemmas. We've got two wish cards. I love, love, love you. Oh my goodness, another wish card. Babe, I love you so. I want you to know that I'm going to miss your love. Uh, Whenever you walk through that door, <laughs> I can't remember the words. I'm coming to meet you. I want to be with you. Some of you are going to expect someone. They're coming in and they're messaging through lots of uh, sexting, possibly. Someone is very desiring to connect. Um, this could come through in September as well if, if this doesn't happen in August. Because I do see some drawbacks, some disappointments. But the bed is still here as the stars will align for paradise, the heat is going to, we're going to see the temperature gorge rise, right? And that's, uh, and remember birds are messages, but they're also flight. They're taking flight. It, may, it can open new horizons. We've got, it was wonderful. We had fun, but I must now move on. Eight of cups. Why did you cut me off just like that? I can't deal. Ten of wands. 
I love you. I love you and this is the Joker and I'm so happy we did not get I hate you. So there's great love. We've only got in two decks, we've got one card that says I love you. That's the luckiest card, right? It's like a twist of fate where someone's going to hear the words I love you. And not only I love you, babe, I love you so and that you're my wish fulfillment that I've known you before in past lifetimes. I dreamt of you before I met you. We've got two Eight of Cups. This is a little bit of a bummer here. You're just someone I used to know. Someone's ego is very hurt. Another Eight, Lion's Gate. Eight, Eight, that portal. We are from such different worlds, but I'm willing to work on this union. Let's see where this will take us. And... I do apologize, but I am married. I know I lied, but now you know. Now we all know, right? My goodness. And uh, I've got some scratches from little guy. I, I noticed them in the last upload. Uh, <laughs> she's, she's very playful. Well, what can you do? She's a baby. Still a baby. I hope you're all doing well, my dear friends. I want to uh wish you well on this new moon in leo i would say send your wishes out to spirit as you're seeing the new moon glyph in the sky two three days after the new moon so if the new moon is on the fourth roughly around the sixth look out in the night see if you could see that new moon glyph that's when you should send your wishes out to spirit trust your intuition whatever works for you um, because making a wish on a dark moon, when you can't see the moon, right? Where are those wishes going to? <laughs> right now, remember this is a new moon, so we could also see the results of this reading of this analysis within six months. So in the Aquarius season, so we're not all on the same timeline. As I said, if you're interested, your own personal story. They usually do come out. We do get so much clarity because it's just the way it is. Tarot works, but we also, many times I do like to check your astrology. So I do suggest always possibly a deluxe reading where we look a little bit into your astrology and then your tarot. Um, but again, that's your choice as we do offer pure astrological, just astrology readings, analysis tarot readings only and then the deluxe readings which is a mixture of both uh, the astrology is more anal an analytical right the tarot just tarot would be more analysis on the tarot we always will reference the planets as the reading right the reading the tarot reading is affected by the astrological influencing energies right now that's why we reference the planets. They are the deities, the energies, the players. Right? And the deluxe, as I said, is a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Looking at the bigger picture, let's say. So patrons get a discount. I've mentioned it before. I'm not going to waste your time and mention it again and again. And patrons also get free giveaways every month so do join us on patreon thank you to our patrons for their support look forward uh, dear patrons look out for the 12 individual love readings and the new moon has been done and as i said we're doing an extra perk special analysis on the synodic cycles and what's going on with the astrology even though the astrology month ahead is already for tier three on patreon and that's about it. And hopefully we'll get a bit of a, uh, a, a swim in the next few days. Um, so August is a little bit on and off uh, with the readings. As you know, it's, it's a holiday month, but I'm still here. I don't know when I'll be away and when I'll be back. So waiting on your support, waiting on your love. And thank you for joining us here today in the chat. Yes, I have been in the chat with you. And we're going to premiere this reading half an hour earlier today because it gets a little bit late in Greece. So 
Thanks for connecting with us. Much love, much light to all of you. Wishing you well.